welcome back to my channel and you can see today we are in a completely different location. It might have something to do with the fact that I have completely trashed my workroom because I'm trying to sort it out. I'll probably even do a little video about what I've done, sorting it out, you know, storage. And also my studio is leakier than the sieve so I can't work in there either. So I thought I would introduce you to my shop. This is my shop, Cloth Paper Stitch. And this is what I do the rest of the time when I'm not doing YouTube or commissions or dressmaking or designing stuff. I thought you would find it kind of interesting, a bit different. Let's get started. I would love to do a Q&A because I really like to know what you want to know. Unfortunately, even though I have over 500 subscribers, I don't get asked enough questions yet, so it would have been very short. So I'm trying to imagine what sort of things you might want to know. I would guess that you would want to know how long I've been sewing. So I was talking to my lovely mum earlier on, who is also here, but you can't see her. I said to her, do you know what? I can't actually remember how long I've been sewing. And she informed me that I was four. <laughs> I've been making things all that time. I do remember starting dressmaking when I was about nine or 10. Certainly made clothes for my dolls. And I started patchwork when I was 13. And I started the actual quilting part of it about 25 years ago. That's my kind of background with sewing and what have you. I've exhibited my quilts at international exhibitions. I've designed probably I don't know, somewhere between 15 and 20 different quilts, some of which you've seen already, lots you haven't. I've been making commissions for a long time, and I still make commissions when I get asked, which is not that often. About five years ago, I set myself a challenge on not buying new fabric, cotton fabric, or any other fabric really, and I decided I could only use what I already had in my fabric stash, or secondhand things, things from charity shops or thrift stores, unless it was for a commission, in which case obviously customers have specific requirements, so you know, I might have to buy some new fabric, and I did the whole thing for a year, and I absolutely loved it. And I've been doing it ever since, I very rarely buy new fabric, unless it's for something very, very specific, so you might have seen the video of me playing planning out a Regency quilt. So obviously I did have to buy the fabric for that because, well, that might take me another 30 years to find the right fabrics just floating around in charity shops and stuff. I try and be as sustainable as possible. I try and be as eco-friendly as possible. So a lot of my designs are about reusing and repurposing things and upcycling. That led me into starting my shop about three years ago. Our shop is called Cloth Paper Stitch. It is probably 70% either vintage, secondhand, so we've got you know dress lengths, things like that, vintage dressmaking patterns, or it's ex shop stock or dead stock, or it's end product recycled. That means when you're recycling bits and pieces like, I don't know, coffee cups, paper, things like that. It doesn't just disappear. I think we have a tendency to think that once we've put it, you know, on the curbside, that it's gone. It doesn't, it goes somewhere, it gets sorted and it gets made into something else. So we sell some of those products. So things like sketchbooks, we sell secondhand craft room stock. So this is our sort of art materials, stamps, ex craft room stuff. So we've got new ink pads, but these are all pre-loved um, stamps. We've got the, oh, we have got some. We've got the cup cycling sketch pads, which are made out of 80% of them is um, recycled coffee cups, which are, those are just brilliant. I'll hold that for now. Paints, these are paints that you can use on fabric. There's some artist made notebooks. And then we have a whole range of DMC threads for embroidery. And you can see one of my quilts behind with some cute little necklaces. These are made by one of our artist makers. I've always wanted to have a dresser or drawers or something with lavender and rose petals. So we sell loose lavender and loose rose petals by the scoop. We also have a ton of 
uh, pre-loved books and sewing kits and oh just so many bits and pieces and I do a lot of uh, searching for kind of vintage sewing ephemera. I've always wanted to collect it and you can never find that stuff. So we've got little half pincushion dolls, which I'll show you in a minute. And um, we have all our lace wound onto vintage textile mill bobbins and things like that. One of my favorite things to search out is vintage lace. So this is a beautiful silk net with silk embroidery. And then I found this one, which is actually wool with silk embroidery. There's the silk embroidery there. But I spend quite a lot of time searching bits and pieces. It's the kind of shop that hopefully you would find something to coo and oo over, but also if you want to revisit, you know, a much loved hobby or even start something new, learn how to do something new. We also have the equipment to do that. So brand new scissors and needles and thimbles and things like that, pins the things that would go rusty. And the last thing that our shop does is we try and support local mostly <laughs> and women mostly in making crafts and artworks as well. And at the moment there's about 15 different um, artists and crafts people in this shop which is really great. But of course our shop's been shut for seven months out of the last 12 so we've only just reopened again. Obviously the elephant in the room, the pandemic. We had to shut our shop in March 2020 and it's been open and it's been closed and it's been open and it's been closed and we've just reopened. And I decided with much encouragement from my son, I have to say, that where I couldn't teach workshops, which is about 50% of what I do usually, now is the time to revitalise my YouTube channel because I did actually start it about five years ago there's literally two videos on it and then life kind of overtook and I was busy taking um, commissions and, and teaching in my studio. We decided that YouTube was a way of reaching out to people that want to learn stuff or just want to reference one or two things like with quilting you don't necessarily want to watch me making a whole quilt I know there's going to be comments people saying yes we do but you you might be making a quilt and think oh, I really don't know how to do this binding thing or how do you layer up a quilt or how do you mark a quilt? All of those sort of things. And then with the dressmaking side of stuff, I know it's quite daunting because dressmaking patterns, be they modern or vintage, never fit anyone. Doesn't matter what size you buy, they never fit anyone. And if you saw the video that went up a couple of weeks ago where I made this blouse, you know that the pattern I used is nothing like the right size. We decided that a YouTube channel would be a little bit like having a private workshop with me doing all sorts of bits and pieces. And that's kind of where we're going. So there will be a mix of quilting and techniques, maybe some of my own designs, dressmaking and all the other bits and pieces that I do as well. Like having your own private craft magazine, I suppose. I would love it if you would come back and join me for my future endeavors. And if you'd like to support the channel, um, I have opened a Ko-fi account. It's in the description and just buy me a coffee and it will help me and my son keep going with uh, our channel and hopefully we can carry on growing it and feel free to drop as many comments as you like as long as they're all nice about things that you would like to see and you can see what I do over on Instagram sometimes when it loads up. I'll see you again soon. Bye.